you all welcome. So pleased to have you here this lovely morning. Uh, today, I want to share with you a topic I'm led to talk about reward for service. That is what the Spirit of God asked me to talk about. I will be praying seriously for this. I will run very fast so that we'll have time to pray. I'm taking my test from Genesis 15:1, Jeremiah 31, 16, and Isaiah 1, 19. Genesis 15, 1, let me have it. I would like to run very fast. He said, after these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, fear not, Abram, I am the sheep and the a sitting great reward. A great, let me have, let me have message translation of it. Genesis 15, 1. Genesis 15, let me have message. Message and new living. He said, after all these things, the word of God came to Abram in a vision. Don't be afraid, Abram. I'm your sheet. Your reward will be what? Grant. Let me see new living. Let me see new living. Sometime later, the Lord spoke to Abraham in a vision and said to him, do not be afraid, Abraham, for I will protect him and your reward will be what? Great. So God is a God that rewards. God is a God that rewards. Praise the Lord. Jeremiah 31, 16. Jeremiah 31, 16. He said, thus says the Lord refrain the voice from weeping and the eyes from tears for the works, the works shall be rewarded, says the Lord, and they shall come again from the land of their enemy. God is telling me to tell you your work, your work shall be, your work shall be rewarded and the reward starts now. He told me the purpose of this service is to activate rewards. It's like he said, command you me concerning rewards. And so many have labored, they are crying. He said, activate their reward and I will come speedily now. Isaiah 119. Isaiah 119. Isaiah 119. Say, if the people, if they are willing and obedient, they shall eat the good of the land. So those that have been willing, that have been obedient, it's our turn, it's your turn to eat the good of the land in the name of Jesus. Now, the term reward means, number one, to give money or, or not, another kind of payment to someone for something good that that person has done. It means to give money or another kind of payment to someone for something good that person has done. So when you pay somebody for something good the person has done, it means what? You are rewarding the person. Number two is to recompense for good service rendered to someone. Is to recompense for what? Good service rendered to someone. So God is a paymaster. He wants to recompense you for the good service rendered to him in his house in various areas. Now, I want to show you four areas. I want to show you four areas. Four areas that, uh, four areas uh, God rewards services. God rewards service or services. Number one, God reward according to our righteousness and the cleanliness of our hands. Thank you, God, for giving me a mouth and a wisdom that all my adversaries cannot be able to gain, say, nor resist. So shall every word be that shall proceed out from my mouth. They cannot return back to me void. They must accomplish that which I please and prosper in the thing where to I sent it. In the name of Jesus Christ, by your word, I subdue under me everything that shall rise up, or that want to rise up against your word in the heart of your children. I decree, let the word of God pierce into their spirit. Grant them understanding. By all trans and boldness you've given unto me, let your word bring miracles in their lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. I cover this auditorium with the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Now, I said, number one is reward according to my righteousness or your righteousness and cleanliness of your hand. The Bible says in 2 Samuel 22, verse 21, Second Samuel said, the Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to my good works, according to the cleanliness of my hands. Has there There is a God that rewards according to your good works. He rewards according to your righteousness, the good things you have done. If there are good things you've done, you've not seen reward. That is why we're here this morning. Those rewards must appear right now in the name of Jesus. Anyone here that have done good, you've been showing righteous acts, you've been doing good work to people, and your hands has been clean towards men. You are not good in the morning, but devil in the night. Every of your reward, I command them to be released into your hands now. So I receive my reward for good works. Say demons, blocking my rewards. 
demons, frustrating my rewards, be wasted in my life. Now, in Jesus' name. So he rewards us according to our righteousness, according to the good things we do, according to our uprightness, according to what we've been doing that is right. That is God that rewards. That is the God that rewards us for the cleanness of our hands. When our hands are clean. When we do things, there is this life some of us live. You don't, you don't do things because of men. When you come to the level that you don't do things because of men, do it because of God. You are not, you are not that person. In fact, you are not a human. You get to a point, if you get to this Christianity that whatever you are doing, you are looking at what God said. What God said, not what your flesh said. At times when things happen like this, I will ask God, what is your will concerning this thing? Holy Spirit, what is your mind concerning this thing? And if you tell me, let's go, I let go. If you say continue, I continue. So, are you that type that your hands are clean? The Bible said in, in, in 1 Thessalonians 4.7. 1 Thessalonians 4.7. It said, for God has not called us unto uncleanliness, but unto what? Holiness. God does not, has not called us unto living a dirty, wicked life. A crafty, selfish life. He has called us to what? Holiness. Praise the Lord. God has called us what? To holiness. The Bible says in Proverbs 11 verse 18b. Proverbs 18b. He said, but he that soweth righteousness shall, do, shall be a sure what? Reward. Anyone that sow righteousness in the right life for people, you must be rewarded. I used to hear people say, eh, because my father helped people, that is why my father is poor. That is not the reason why your father is poor. Your father has not told you the reason why he's poor. As long as your father helped to train other people's children, you, when it's time to train you, you can never be... When it's time to train you, God will never watch you people be frustrated. At times, there are good works we do and some evil works we do. I saw a man a certain time, which I called him and addressed him openly. This man, what he does is that he goes to collect his sister's children. Nobody say, I want to train them, but he's sleeping all of them. Yes, all of them are his sex. He, all he, if you refuse, he will tell you that he cannot be. And if you, he will threaten you if you say you will see worse. So this thing came. Nobody told me until one day one of the girls came here. I was praying. God opened my eyes. I saw it. I called him and confronted him. That was the end. He reacted and disappeared. He used to manage to come to church once in a while. So he ran away from church. So I told the girl, I told that girl, he said, he said, don't even advise me. I've left the house. So I remember like three of them that left the house. That is what it, that some of us that practice that. In office where you are, in office, you, you came one day with your fight to look for work in that office. And you passed through process and you are implied. Now you are not in that office. Somebody again is coming to look for work. You begin to give them condition. You begin to tell them if they don't sleep you. If they don't pay you money. If you are such, no matter the good works you do, you will die. I'm telling you, your suffering does not have part two. And when it come, it will come, eh, it will, that is, they will arrange themselves and come like a white wind. There are wickedness that when we do them, they are waiting for us somewhere else. God rewards wickedness and God rewards righteousness. Are you hearing me? So don't, don't tell me because you cannot show kindness to people. You cannot wipe away people's tears, pay their school fees. It is time for your children to pay their school fees. It's not, it, it's not possible. God, does it, God is not an unjust God. He must make a way. But at times we show people kindness with an ulterior motives. We show people kindness doing dehumanizing them. We show people kindness by, by forcing them to do the things they don't want to do. If you are that type, you are sowing white wind. And very soon, if as I'm talking, you have started reaping it. Except you repent. Praise the Lord. God does not God reward wickedness and God reward righteousness. Number two. Number two, reward of keeping God's words. Reward of keeping God. God rewards you anytime you keep his word. What do you mean by keep his word? Retaining his word in your heart. You must learn to retain God's words in your heart. You must learn it. You must, some of us, we, we retain Buga. We retain Awilo. We retain, what is all this? I know the two know that this is their song. We retain so many worldly things in our heart. Um, oh, uh, there's a one my husband was singing one day. Um... Okay, no, I don't know what I say. Something has come. Adult whom has come. He was he came that day, was singing adult whom has which can somebody. He said, the one I learned today where they come from. 
adulthood. You, you retain the things of this world, but the word of God, the Bible says in Romans 1, it says because you refuse to retain the word of God in your heart, he said, I will give you a reprobate heart. What is the I will give you a corrupted mind. The only thing your heart will be desiring, the only thought that will be coming to your heart is polluted things. Your heart, your heart cannot think anything good but evil. Why? Because you refuse to retain God in your heart. So when you keep the word of God, you are retaining God word in your heart. The Bible says where you re- the, the Bible says in Psalm 19, 10 and 11. Psalm 19, 10 and 11, the reward of keeping God's words in your heart. Psalm 19, 10 and 11. It says more to be desired are they than gold. So the word of God is to be desired more than gold. Yea, there are much than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey, and the what? The honeycomb. Give me 11. Verse 11. He said, moreover, by them, by the word of God, is the servant one. I want you to tell your neighbor, by the word of God, are you warned? So he said, moreover, by them is the servant one. And in keeping of them, there is what? A great reward. Let me simplify your verse 11. In keeping of them, there is a gain. Anytime you keep the word, you in priest consciously keep the word of God in your heart. You get it. Well, let me simplify of verse 11. He said, moreover, by them is your servant one, reminded, illuminated, and instructed. And in keeping them, there is a what? A great reward. Learn to keep the word of God in your heart. What are the rewards of it? The Bible told us that it is Psalm 119 verse 10. He said, how can a young man keep uh, cleanse his way? He said, by taking heed of your word. The word of God, when you keep the word of God in your heart, it will cleanse your ways. It will cleanse your ways. He even said in verse 9 of the same scripture, he said, your word have I hid. Okay, verse 9 is what I quote. Then 11, he said, your word have I hid in my heart that I will not sin against you. When you keep the word of God in your heart, are you getting me? He will prevent you from sinning. He will prevent you from lying. He will prevent you from, 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 from cheating. When the devil comes like a flood, the word of God in your heart will do what? We lift up a standard against them. Did Jesus Christ not tell us about two kinds of believers? He said, these are two kinds of believers you have in the church. He said, one, he said, these two hear me, but this is the difference. He said, why calling me Lord, Lord? When you hear my word and you do not do it, you do not obey them. You don't keep it. You don't practice it. Why is it that you can't practice? Because my word is not retained in your heart. The word of God that is not in your heart, you cannot practice it. Joshua 1 8 told us, he said, let this word of God not depart in your mouth. Show you how it will not depart from your mouth. Say, so what did you do? He said, you shall meditate upon it day and night that that mayest be able to do what? To observe and to do all that is written therein. And when you have observed to do all that is written therein, what will happen? The word of God, which is a spirit, will make your ways what? Prosperous. And you will have what? Good success. But you have to re- no, but no angel will retain it in your heart. No, no pastor will read it. You have to take the word of God and put it in your heart and hold it. It might be that of a healing. You put it and keep it there. It might be that of to have flee from fornication. You take it and keep it. It might be that of wickedness. I don't know the, the one of it. You must learn to carry the word of God. Put it in your heart and hold it there. Some of us, your heart, as I'm talking to you, no scripture is in your heart. No word of God. And the Bible says, and this word is God. I said, this word, this word is God. And this word is life. And this life is light. And this light does what? Shine it on in darkness and darkness cannot comprehend it. When you put the word of God in your spirit, the Bible says we do what? He will cleanse your ways. He said we make you not to sin against God. He didn't stop there. He said he will also give you life. John 6, 6, 6, 6, 3. He says it's my word. He says it's my word. The word I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. The word will give you life. The Bible says in Ephesians 6, 12, he said the sword of the spirit is what? The word of God. When you retain the word of God in your heart, the word turns to be what? Sword. While you are sleeping, the word is fighting for you. It's fighting for you. The word is fighting for you. He said, your word is a sword. He didn't stop there. In Proverbs 4, verse 20 to 21, he said, the word, especially in, 20, in 22, he said, he, said, he said, this word, he said, it shall be health. It shall be medicine to all your flesh. How can it be medicine? When you read it and walk away, no. It's only when you put it in your heart. You must learn to force the word of God in your heart. You have fear problem. You have to put the word of God in your heart. You are always scared.
earth. Anytime your children go out, something will happen to them. You have to put the water there. I lift up my eyes onto the hills. From where cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord. Put that scripture for me, new living of it. I just saw new living of it. Which day? I shouted. So one, two, one. Just be, from one to, just be showing it one after another. Let them say, let me recite uh, King James. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. From where cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord, which make heaven and earth. He that keep, uh, he that keepeth me will not slumber. Behold, eh? He that keepeth me shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is my keeper. The Lord is my shield upon my right hand. The sun shall not smite me by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve my soul. The Lord shall preserve me from all evil. The Lord shall preserve my going out and my coming in. From this, did you see what he mean by preserve? The Lord Himself watches. Return five. Return five, my son. Return five. The Lord, the Almighty, had given by Himself. He watches over me and my children. And you, my children, I'm talking about all of you. The Lord stands beside you as your protective shade. You can imagine putting it in your heart. They tell you, trailer some assault. Isabel, leave me alone. Thou art what? You'll be cutting your nails. Because you know he cannot touch your children. Why? He has given his angels charge concerning to keep them in how many ways? In all the ways. That is putting the word of God in your heart. That is putting the word of God in your heart. So there are benefits. Stop leaving your heart. Only what is in your heart uh, is uh, Nigeria, Agbado, Cassava. Only what is in your heart is this. There is no word of God repeating itself in your heart. He said, Your word is a lamp unto my feet. You are not seeing where, where you're going. He said, Put the word of God inside of you. You will see road where you're going. Is the word that created you, you don't want to believe. The words of men that didn't create you is what you want to believe. It doesn't help. So the word of God rewards. Number three. Number three, reward. Number three, reward. Reward for servicing your pastor. God gives you reward for servicing your pastor. The Bible says Matthew 10, 41a. Matthew 10, 41a. Matthew 10, 41a. He that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. Stop there. He that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet. And I say, God, I want to understand this scripture today. How true is this? He said, let us see how truthful it is. Abraham received the holy man. True of God. The three men. What did they give reward him with? They reward him with the fruit of the wife with what? The fruit of the woman. Is it true? He honored them. He gave them a call. He serviced them. Abraham received Melchizedek. Which, no, no person recognized him. It's only Abraham that was paying tithe to him. It's only Abraham. And what happened? He blessed him. And Abraham became the greatest. Did you get it now? Let me be showing you. Because I say, I say Spirit of God, prove me. I want to see how true this today. He said, you remember Rekha? The Halot. The Halito. Who remember the Halit to recap? Nobody know recap here. Uh -huh. The spies that Joshua sent to Jericho. What did he do? He brought them in. He serviced them. He took care of them, nourished them, and showed them back door, lowered them through the window, and they escaped. And what happened? When they came to destroy Jericho, only him and his household were exempted. Was, it, was she rewarded? Yes. What of the widow of Zarephath that serviced Elijah? Was she rewarded? Yes. What of the woman of buried woman Shenamite that service Elisha? Was she that was buried for even to old age? Did she put to bed? Yes, with a son. Should I be calling? What of Rebecca that service the son of a prophet, Damascus? What was the benefit? That is how she find her husband. <laughs> you see, some of the reason why you see so many you see, young girls they are not getting married is that they think that at, uh, artificialness. The one they put in. I'm not telling you it's wrong. 
But in putting all this decoration, you don't have common character. He will be denying you a husband for nothing. You can imagine a young girl do to get married that, that can't greet. There's a proverb in my place that every young girl that is that is that is uh, matured enough to greet, he said, every house you pass might be your husband's house. It might be your what? Your husband's house. A young girl, you never marry. If you see a papa like this, you, you can just walk up pass. In fact, not only walk up pass, you go give them your ikebe. You might sit on a chair. They tell you, no, get off a cell. Now, leave me alone. Let me first come here. So, let, 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 let the person where they look for husband. See, see, let me tell you this truth. You know, so many of you are waiting for a man to walk up to you. Fine girl, I like you. I like your shape. I like it. Let me tell you, I discovered that 70% of marriage doesn't come through that way. It comes from introduction. What is introduction? Somebody telling somebody. And by observation, thank you. As if you know what I want to say. Somebody who observed your character, your meekness. Like what Mike taught us today in meekness. You have somebody who observes your humility. Who observes how you attend. Some of you as you're coming, going to the, you will see a member, a man or a woman. Carrying thought you will not help. Hey, mommy, wait, let me help you. For where? You will even match that her bag with your pencil shoe. Just to maintain your cat walking. These are the small, small things. No care. You forgot the person you are treating. That person might have a brother. He might have a sister. He might have somebody that is related. That is looking for a wife you are not aware of. Today, they might not bring the person say you must marry. But to tell, I bet, see, follow me, see what I see for this girl. No be bad thing. Let's be careful of some of our characters. When you see a girl, nobody is asking you at all how, the, how much, how much. It's not as... Check yourself very well. It's not winch, it's not demon. The thing where they do you from you. The you in you. Watch your character. Watch your care. What you can, uh, I brought a young girl one time. A young girl was, okay, okay, let me put it away. Hi, God. Pastor Beverly, we've seen things in ministry. She was stranded. She doesn't have a home. We met her. She lost her, we met her when she lost her job and lost, that's how we knew her. I told my husband, there's something I saw about this. He said, you two see, continue. I said, I saw, there's something I saw in this girl. Let's help her. He said, any way you can help, I will assist. We laugh over it. And I went to talk to one of my daughters. I said, please help me accommodate her. With that questioning, she took her in. They started living together. Later, she called me. Say, mommy, please. I'm seeing something in this girl. She will not bring money. She will not sweep the house. I will go to market. I will bring the money. I will do the cooking. I will serve her. She will, the only work she does is to go and call her. She finishes, she will drop the plate for me. If you will not work. Yeah, yeah, some of you are doing this thing I'm saying. Some of you eat food and drop it for your mother. Bed, you wake up from it. Now your mama goes, and your man, you, if your mother here, you are doing it. Shame on to you. Shame on to you. You get that. Hey, I don't talk now. I don't agree. Make her do the bed. I know they do. I go. In fact, there was a day my children, they left their bed, went to school. I told my husband, don't do this. I said, don't touch this room. You poor have done enough. They return. I said, drop your bag. Begin to do it. He said, mommy, we rushed out. I said, rush in. Arrange the bed. Put the whole place in order. Put the bed, put the whole room in order. Drop your bag. They drop it at the door and begin to fix the room. And this girl now helped her. Please, because of my time, this girl now helped her. And then this girl called me and complained. He said, how am I, if I slap you and you shut up? Are you okay? How can you go to eat yourself? You will not flush it. Toilet, you will not wash. This one will go to work, buy things and come and cook. You will, you know, she said she, she kept quiet one month, two months, three months. He said, I can't take it again. What kind of human being is this? Some of you listening to me, you are like that. You are, you are useless to your parents. You are useless to somebody keeping you. Even when you want to help them, you are, see, you are, you are engaging more so as if they are oppressing you. Imagine you, I brought you to my house. I will not remind you to wash my clothes. I brought, uh, my house girl, no, you will go back to your father's house where you will be a full girl. You can't be in my house, you will not be useful to me. 
my car will be there. You will not remember to wash it. And I'm giving you free food, free accommodation, electricity, and I need to pay. Now lie. It's not, if you are here practicing it, stop it. You are not showing that child. And if you have a husband, sister, or, his, or your sister, or I don't know, from your, your husband, stop it. Stop it. It's not right. If your husband opposes it, leave all of them to enter bush the same time. I'm being honest with you. And I told her, I finished her. I said, from today, you've not even gotten a job. Oh, yeah? You will send her money, she'll go and buy it. He said, I know, I'll be cooking only in Domi. I said, be cooking only, all of you will be eating only in Domi. I put that law. And this one accommodated her. One day, she, the, the other girl comes and says, she's changed, you know, she has said, now nah, she go to the toilet, she will flush. I said, you came to pray for me that you have, a, I should pray for you have an infection. He said, yes. He said, look at the infection result. Toilet has not been washed for three weeks. Can you imagine a woman, a woman's toilet is washed twice in a, that's two days, in under two days, you wash it once. Women, you understand now? You understand why a, a toilet where woman use, why it has to be there? Because if not, something will glug glug enter. You begin to transfer it to your husband and all his generation. You get what I'm talking about? So I rebuked her. Thank God she listened to me. She changed on that area. She started doing something. She now got a job. One day I was ministering and I said to her, I saw you receiving a job. Go ask so so there. And she obeyed me and she went and got a job. This other person was transferred to another city. So she took the house. She said she needed assistance. I gave money to assist to pay. I said, now nah, you are calm. Face your life. Another sister had problem. That's where my talk is really taking me to. Another sister had problem. And I said, please help her. She said, I don't like staying with somebody. I said, you said what? You said, you said mommy, this, this stress. I don't, I don't want any person to I have passed through stress in life. I don't want to be stressed. I said, ah. As, and, I told, and I said to her, I'm not dead at my life. It's not up to one month. You said living in this house. But someone, he said, all the, all the conveniences, please, mommy, I'm back. Can I contribute money later? I said, no, she must stay with you. He said, he said, mommy, please, I, I don't just want. I said, I said, whether you want it or not, I'm forcing you to want it. She must stay with you. That is, I'm telling you, that is how I was talking to her. She was talking, I left her car. I said, carry my things. I went to my car and left her. Let her, she text me. Oh, yeah, where is the person? I said, oh, you, you, as if you are ready for my war. The girl went. She made life uncomfortable for that girl. The, the lady on her own ran out of the, she didn't even report to me again. She ran out of the house. I called her. I said, she somebody accommodated you. Say yes. I said, now, this one. You have. He said, I can't take her. I said, but oh, we took it. I corrected you before your face and you changed and you couldn't wait for her. These are the things we are saying. When you have such, you know, can you imagine a girl that cannot accommodate you want to marry? The man you are marrying, the, the mother, God vomited him from heaven. He landed on earth. He doesn't have father, he doesn't have mother, he doesn't have any person. I bet don't take my time. Elisha service who? Elijah. Was he rewarded? Yes. Samuel service El Eli. Was he rewarded? Yes. Just be answering me. Joshua service Moses. Was he rewarded? Yes. Mary, the sister of Lazarus. Serve, break alabaster oil. Service Jesus. Anointed Jesus for, uh, for his burial. Was she rewarded? Mary Magdalene serviced Jesus with, we have, after she received Christ. Was she rewarded? Peter serviced Jesus. He became what? The rock. Aquila and Priscilla and Phobia serviced who? Paul. Were they rewarded? Zacchaeus serviced Jesus. Was Zacchaeus rewarded? Uh, pastor E.A. Adeboye, the most foolish pastor on earth. As long as that's the only way I can describe Papa. He's the most if I mean, I may be the second fluid. The, do you know that is the only man of God that is a servant in now? The redeemed does not belong to him. He's still serving. Redeemed does not belong to our father, E A, our Mumu father. Because now when someone in front of you call him Mumu, another Mumu would they like to follow? 
He's a servant now. The redeem does not belong to him. He's not the owner of redeemed Christian Church of God. He came the same way every part, some part. Some of us are general overseer will not even reach his back. Did you see it now? He followed his master. His master is dead. He's still, the master is not there for him to obey. He's still obeying. What kind of mumu is that? The master is dead. Now, Kuma collect everything, Waka. Change the name immediately. You're not going to redeem Africa Nation Church. Are we not seeing it happening today? But he still mumu foolishly. He will stand in Jesus' name. He said, you know, get sense. No wise. See, we, 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 see the wise ones now. See the wise ones. So no man services his pastor and not go, now, now receive the reward. The Bible says Matthew 9.41. Matthew 9.41. Matthew 9.41. Please let me have it. Matthew. Okay, let me have it. Matthew 9. Okay. Maybe it's from me. Okay. The scripture I'm saying is whosoever shall give a pastor shall not lose his reward. Okay, number four, let me take it so that we get up. Reward for service in God's house or kingdom. Reward for service in God's house or kingdom. I want to take, let me use seven minutes to run this and we go. Let me have Mark chapter 10, 28 to 31. This one is the one that concerns all of us most. Matthew 10. Mark, Mark, yes. Then Peter, I like Peter. Peter know how to ask direct question. Then Peter began to say unto him, Lord, we have left all who and have followed you. And Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto thee, there is no man that have left house. Everybody say left house. Everybody say left brethren. Everybody say left sisters. Everybody say left father. Everybody say left mother. Say wife. Children, land, shop, for my sake, and the king and the what? Gospel. Let's see what happened. 30. But he shall receive what is the reward? An hundredfold. When? Now, in this time. How's it? What will God use to pay you back here? Houses. And you see why you must become a landlord? Brethren, sisters, mothers, children. Land. So begin to look, claim your own lands. With what? Persecution. When the persecution comes, God will give you victory. As long as we are in this world, there is persecution. And in the world to come, eternal life. That means after he finished blessing us here, he will also bless us when we get there. Do you get it? And the Bible said in verse, are you, have you given me 31? Have you given me 31 of seven? Aha, uh-huh, this is the measure. But many that our first shall be last. That's where I want to talk about. And the last first. That is where the trouble is. I have known this scripture many for years. But I just discovered the meaning of this scripture. Let me tell you what it means. You that have been walking, you have started murmuring. You have started grumbling. They're complaining. I have been working. I am tired. I'm not seeing anything. Oh, this. Every time I'm coming. God, where are you? You will not see Kubu. Talk of shiki. Talk of reward. You ask me how. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10 10. See, you see murmuring. You see this thing you call murmuring. Give me 1 Corinthians 10 10. You see this thing you call murmuring. Please, I would like you to give it to me in Amplifier New, New Living too. Let's see. Neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of who? who? They destroyed. Oh, yeah, go. Give me. Nor discontently complain as some of them did and were put out of the way entirely by the word destroyed. Who is the destroyer? Dead. Let me see New Living. And don't grumble. <laughs> As some of them did, and then we are destroyed by the angel of death. Have you seen people who has been laboring with you, and they are not blessed? Truly, they are laboring, but they are not blessed. This is the demon. They have become last. They came at first, but because instead of you to grumble, 
go to your pastor and make your request known before God. I have been serving and not seen any reward. What is the pro- I don't want to call him. There's one of my daughter here that did something that suits me one time. She came and met me saying, I have done this and did that and no reward. What? I didn't see answer. What is the problem? I sat down and started telling her answer. Her joy was full. He said, you've given me strength. Let me go back to my battle now and, and correct the things. Our rewards are not the same. Our rewards are not the same. There are some of us God is rewarding every day, but you are not aware he's rewarding you. The Bible says in Philippians 2.14, I know why I'm quoting these scriptures. So many of us are grumbling. You are murmuring. Because of it, the good things you are doing, you are withdrawing, start, stop doing them. Do all things without murmurings and disputing. Let me see. Let me see amplify. Okay. Okay, no, no, no. I just want that. No, I'm interested in only 14. Do all things without grumbling and fault finding and complaining against God and questioning and doubting among yourselves. When you do it, the little one you do will be destroyed. I don't die. That's why every time you come to church, your face. You are no more coming. The day you stop coming to church is that day you start grumbling. All this one you are coming, you are just wasting transport fare. You cannot be blessed. I must say this. You cannot be blessed. Wherever you are rendering services to God. The Bible said in Colossians. Let me say Colossians 30, 20 to 25. Please let me take me to New Living. Direct. Colossians 30, 20 to 25. Colossians 3, 20 to 25. Let me have it fast, please. New Living. Children, always obey your parents for this pleases the Lord. Okay? Fathers, do not aggravate your children. They will become dis- discouraged. Slaves, who is slaves? Talking of we servants. Obey your earthly masters in everything you do. Try to please them all the time. Not just when they are watching you. Serve them sincerely because of your reverent fear of God. Continue. Walk willingly at whatever you do as though you were working for the Lord, rather for people. Remember that the Lord will give you an inheritance as a what? Your reward. And that the master you are serving is who? Christ. 25. Are you seeing scriptures? But if you do what is wrong, you will be paid back for the wrong you have done. For God has no... Second John 1 8. For some of us that have been in church for 10 years, 15 years, you are bitter like bitter leaf. Second John 1 8. Let me show you why nothing is working. And you are more angry. People that are coming, you are receiving. You are not receiving. Look to yourselves. Bible says, Look where? Did he say, Look at Pastor Beverly? He said, Pastor Beverly, look at your own self. Huh? Can you put up scriptures up here? Can you put up scripture up here? Please do it for me, sir. He said, look to yourself that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Let me have amplify of it. Or no living. Look to yourself. Take care that you may not lose. Throw away or destroy all that we, we and you have labored for. But that you may pre- persevere until you do what? Win and receive back a perfect reward in full. Wait, it, devil. He said, Watch out what you do. Watch out that you do not lose what you have worked so hard to achieve. Be diligent so that you receive your full reward. What is it that you'll be doing? The devil will be whispering to you. You are coming to church, but now your clothes, they come. Your spirit, no come. So the pastor will be praying, reward, reward him, reward him, reward him. God said, oh, get out from me. No reward is coming. God, the Bible said in 1 Corinthians 3.14. 1 Corinthians 3.14. He said, God will reward us but your work will be tested. 
If any man walks about which he has built thereof, for he shall receive what? A reward. First Corinthians 3 8, where I stop. And Revelation 22 12. Now, he that planted and he that watered and one, and every man shall receive his own reward. How? According to his own labor. Are you a laborer or you just, I'm a worker, I'm a worker. Are you doing the things they ask you to do? The people that God reward is the laborer. It's not the he that labor. A laborer is worthy. Who is a laborer? A worker that is working. Not a worker that is sitting down. Come by 3 o'clock, you come by 5 o'clock. Do this thing, you will not do it. Who are worker? I'm a worker. With your signboard, with uh, uh, the tally. I mean, what is it tally? What do they call that thing? I'm a worker. But anything the master said do, you will not do it. Revelation 12, 12, 22, 12. He said, behold, I come quickly. And my reward is with me. To do what? To give every man according as his work. He no go give you according to what you know work. So in case you are in a church here or you are here, you claim you're a worker. A worker is supposed to be at 8 o'clock to pray for these people here. But you choose to come by 8.30. And as you are coming, you are cut walking. That is why your life is frustrated. That is why your life is frustrated. One day God told me, I want to show you a movie. I want to show you that Satan is real. I said, I don't understand this. I want to show you that Satan is real. I finished beating one of my child. I was dressing for hospital. I for church. The child, poo. I said, no, let me change it. Instead of changing it inside the church. Immediately I finished changing the cloth. I discover I feel like to poo. I didn't remember what God told me. When I woke up to pray around five, I went to poo. I finished poo and came back. The child, at the time I said, if I don't give the child food now, I enter church. I said, let me give the child food. Before I know it, time has passed. He said, what time are you going to do? Look at the time now. And I remember, he said, do you know Satan is real? Do you know he's the one that organized all these things? He said, yes. He said, okay, look at it with the physical eye. Is it wrong that a child poo? Is it wrong that I went to poo? <laughs> Is it wrong that I fed the child? But the devil will arrange it the way to distort that time. Excuses. Let's be upstanding. 